Good morning and welcome to the latest Buckfussy Wild Watch film. I've got up early for this one and this one's called Moth Trap Morning. So this is the moth trap. Now a moth trap is basically a bulb and this is a mercury vapour bulb so it's got it produces a lot of ultraviolet light which insects can see and then it's lit up at night moths and other insects are flying around across the meadow here around the woodlands and they'll get attracted to the ultraviolet light. They'll come in here come to the bulb hit these little veins on the side and then drop into the moth trap. Other moths will be sitting around here as well and we'll have a look for those in a minute. So there's about 2,500 different types of moth in Britain. Um, they fly at different times of year, so through this you can really tell what time of the year it is by looking in the moth trap. So I, immediately I can see in here it's spring, uh, late April time, and we've got a good selection of spring moths to look at. Inside the moth trap there's a, a, been placed a, a number of egg boxes, and these are just pr to provide the moths with somewhere to sit uh, when they come into the light, so they can sit in the shadows and they'll remain sat in here because they're nocturnal insects, they'll remain sat in here right throughout the day. So perfect time now, it's nice and cool in the early morning, they won't be active and we can just have a look at them and identify them. Okay, I mean the good thing about moth traps is you never quite know what you're going to find inside, it's you know like opening up your presents on Christmas Day. Um, so let's have a look in here, so immediately we've got some lovely moths, this is a a muslin moth, this male, there's a Quaker there as well. I'll pop that one back in there. So this is a muslin moth, it's related to the tiger moths. Uh, this is a male, you can tell he's a male because he's dark grey brown. And this one has a little trick, if a bird came along and pecked it like that, it actually pretends to be dead. So it just sits, sits with its little legs up like that. Um, and birds of course don't really want to eat dead insects, they want to eat live ones. So hopefully the bird will go away thinking it's dead and then a few minutes later the muslin moth can wake up and then find somewhere to sit in amongst the vegetation. So we'll pop him in a container there. Have a look underneath, oh, there's all sorts on here. Let's uh, we'll get the muslin moth off. So on here we have some lovely moths. We have a pebble prominent moth, beautiful moth here. And I'll show you a bit in a, in a minute how these uh, the patterns on these moths help them to be camouflaged during the day. And these rather lovely mossy green, sort of with dark marking moths, these are called brindle beauties. It's one of those there and another one there. They're a little bit variable, um, but they're both the same species. On to the next box now. We've got uh, a few different moths here, another muslin moth there. Uh, these ones, have a look in the glass. There's another muslin moth. And this one's called a clouded drab. Unfortunate name for it. It's quite a nice little moth, um, but it, and it's very variable. But it is some of the forms of it are quite drab brown, I suppose. Um, this is a nice little one called a flame shoulder, and it has this uh, pale line across the the shoulder of the wings there. There's your moths on the other side. Oh, okay. On this side, we have some lovely moths here. This is the lesser swallow prominent moth. Uh, this one's camouflaged onto a bit of, looks like a bit of birch bark. The caterpillars of that moth feed on birch. And there's a pebble prominent moth. And that one looks like a bit of a broken twig, uh, snapped off bit of branch, something like that. More muslin moths, they're obviously quite common here. And brindle beauties again here. And here's one called the Hebrew character. It has this little marking on its wing, which is where it gets its name from. Uh, most of the moths get their name from uh, 17th, uh, well, 17th century uh, entomologists. Uh, they were named in um, Georgian times and they get, uh, they've got some fantastic names. And the reason for that is that the, the only people at that time who could actually go moth trapping were 
very rich gentlemen uh, mainly and they had rather lavish homes and they were full of things like wainscots and carpets and all these sort of things and so they named the moths after after the things in their houses so you can get an idea of how how they lived really and what their houses were like by looking at the uh, looking at the names of the moths oh here's a beauty this is a, a pale prominent moth one of my favourite ones in the spring. It has this enormous great big nose sticking out the front and it just looks like a bit of chipped, dead, you know, that sort of soft, dead wood that you get. And there he is. Look at that. I'll find a bit of wood actually to uh, put him on in a minute. We can show that how that camouflage works so well. Um, looking a bit deeper, here's another lesser swallow prominent on that one and another Hebrew character on there. Just a few more boxes now. There's a beautiful yellow moth here called the brimstone, sulphur yellow moth. Absolutely stunning little thing. Caterpillars look like a twig. Uh, they're looper moth caterpillars and they look exactly like a little twig on a hawthorn or uh, other shrubs which they feed on. Uh, a couple more muslin moths and another muslin moth and another Hebrew character there. That's pretty well all that's inside the trap. We'll make a note of what we caught in a minute, uh, write down the numbers. But before I do that, uh, when the moths come into the light, some of them are attracted, go into the light, but others just sit around in the vegetation and others find sort of places which they'll be camouflaged during the day. And so we've got a few of these around. So if we look carefully on the wall, you'll see there's a great prominent moth just sat there. My favorite one's this one. This is the Oak Beauty which is just superbly camouflaged against the bit of lichen there. It just melts into the background. Now we've got about 50 moths in the trap uh, this evening. And these are all many male moths which are flying around at night looking for females. So they tend to be the ones which get attracted to the light. But they're all living and there's hundreds and hundreds of moths out in the woodlands, in the meadows and the fields here during the day. But if you go looking for them, you almost hardly ever find them and the reason for this is because they're so so camouflaged and I just I brought a few props along just to show you this so on here I put some of the moths we've caught I can't even see them myself now um, here's one this is a, a great prominent moth and this is a sort of twig hugger sort of big furry legs and it hugs onto the twig here and just melts into the background so you, you just never see that if you were just walking through the wood and Mm -hmm. Where's he gone? Oh, on the same twig actually. Right next to it, a pebble prominent. You can see the way it just merges, just looks a bit like the tip of its wing, just looks like a bit of broken uh, twig. And it just sits there, perfectly camouflaged. And they just sit really tight during the daytime. They won't fly until it gets dark. Finish off by just showing you the, this, the pale prominent moth, which, oh, let's get it. Now this moth, as you say, as we saw, looks like a bit of dead bark, that sort of thing. I've never found one of these during the daytime, but I'm sure the sort of place it would sit during the day would be on a bit of pale dead bark like that. The moths seem to know where they're camouflaged, which is the amazing thing. So they can sit on there, wait during the day, and then fly away at night. Now with these moths, we'll either keep them in the moth trap or we'll release them into some bushes and trees during the, day during the morning and the daytime. They can sit in there, camouflage from birds, and then they'll fly off uh, when the night time comes again. Well, we've had a good haul of moths. Uh, we've had 71 moths of 17 different species, and these are all typical spring species. But as I said earlier, the, the moths will be changing through the season. So we'll be back again in a few weeks to see which different moths are here and maybe get some big hawk moths, which should be flying soon.